Welcome back to Mad Props. And this might sound a little off or a little weird, or maybe it doesn't sound bad at all. I really don't know. Um, but this is another episode of Mad Props. It's an audio only today because it's been a really busy week on my end. And I'm actually taking this time to record a podcast while also taking my dog for a walk. So very different from what I usually do, obviously, not sitting at a desk, no video, nothing like that. But I really wanted to make sure that I got another podcast out because consistency has been key and we want to keep being consistent. So if you're looking for reels or promotion, it'll probably be things that aren't a part of this podcast. It'll be off the cuff stuff and things like that. But for this one, we are, we are audio only. You may hear me say some things like I just stopped there for a second because my dog Brady started chasing what looked like a frog. I didn't know what it was. So I had to make sure that was all good there. But thank you for joining another episode of Mad Props. Make sure you follow us on social media at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and X slash Twitter. Or follow Schnabel Studios on the same things. Instagram, Facebook, X slash Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Or you can find us on uh, LinkedIn as well if you're a more business savvy person. Um, in this podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about what's been going on, why it's been busy, uh, kind of reflect on the last podcast, which I've gotten a lot of feedback over my list. So we're going to go over that a little bit and then uh, maybe some other stuff in the future. I don't want to promise anything because I don't know how long this is going to go for as is the duration of the walk. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, you can even go on my personal Instagram or you can go on Schnabel Studios, you can find him. And there might even be some on Mad Props, you can find Brady. Uh, he is an English cream golden. He is the cutest dog in the world next to Sadie, his sister. They're tied for first. So if you don't want to, I'll, I'll try to post a photo at some point on Mad Props and on Schnabel Studios so you can see Brady and all his cuteness. Um, but it's just been a busy week. I had a weekend full of recording. Uh, I was recording at the Dallas Card Show in uh, Allen, Texas, which we'll get more into in a second because it was pretty fun and there was some ex exciting stuff that went on and we got to do some cool stuff. So I want to start off with last week's podcast, though, because I got a lot of feedback, not as much on the Drake versus Kendrick beef. The only thing I really got feedback on that end was that I called the episode Drake versus Kendrick and we didn't talk about that as much as I should have called the top five rappers that fell off because that was really what the episode was about um but I so that's the biggest thing I got there but when it came to the fall offs I got some I got some uh some feedback on that including uh Chance the Rapper being at number three guys I'm a huge huge Chance the Rapper fan. To be honest, I'm a fan of, I think, everyone on that list. Logic, I was a much bigger fan of when I was in college, and then I got out of college, and I didn't really keep my fandom up, but everyone else I was a huge fan of, and um, but Chance the Rapper is one of my favorite rappers literally of all time. Like, it's not even, it's not even debatable. He's up there. He's meant so much to me spent so much to some of my friendships I said it on the last podcast like my you know everybody that's listened to the show or has listened to other shows on Chanel Studios knows Kyle Scott is uh, a, a really close friend of mine and we got started by listening to Acid Rap and 10 Day and a bunch of other albums like that so it's meant a lot and he's one of my favorites of all time and I didn't really want to go too hard on him because I didn't want, I didn't, I don't, I don't, I don't think his fall off is as major as putting it on there, if that makes sense. Like I know he, I know right now he's looked at as fallen off because he's released one studio album ever and it was one of the biggest flops when it came to anticipation. <laughs> it was, his first album was more anticipated than anyone's I can remember in recent history and it just, didn't hit it just didn't hit it didn't hit like anyone thought it would 
and that was unfortunate, right? Like, I'm a huge fan. But I think some, some of the snippets that he's been releasing and some of these songs he's been releasing, I just truly think he's going to be back, and I think he's going to be good. I think he just needs to get back to his roots, honestly. Like, a lot of people try to morph their sound and change their sound to try to, to grow as an artist, and I appreciate that. But I just think, in Chance the Rapper's case, he just became too overproduced. Like, if you look at his early stuff, like 10 Day and Acid Rap, they're both mixtapes, and they're both not overly reproduced. They're kind of just a beat with a couple switches on them, and that's about it. But then he gets, you know, you get into the big day or you get in the coloring book. And man, those are just like highly produced. I mean, he's working with Kanye. He's working with all these different people. And you could just hear the difference in the sound. And he's just trying to, I think, grow his sound, which makes sense. But I think he just needs to get back to his roots. Get back to those like backpack, crazy rap kind of roots. And I think he's going to. So... I just wanted to address that. I'm not going to put him higher than three because I didn't even want to put him on the list because I like Chance the Rapper so much. But I, when I make these lists, I did the same thing with the top five relievers, which I know a lot of you will get into that in a second too. Looking for part two. Um, but I, I, I just couldn't, I didn't want to put him on the list, but I'm not, I don't make these lists too bias. You know, I make them with my opinion, so there's some bias put in there. But I do try to put like, fact and reason behind these lists so they're not like completely obsolete by just coming out and if you're going to make a fall off list you have to put him on there because he's one of the bigger ones we've seen because the big day was just such a flop anyway that was number one. Second thing a lot of people told me about that was me putting rich homie Quan at number five and not a lot of these other guys um, one big thing I will say is a lot of people just didn't listen to the rules. Maybe they just saw the clip, which is fine. You know, that's why I make these clips to get out there so people see them, but maybe they just saw the clip. Maybe they just didn't realize what the rules really were. I personally put on there that, you know, like I'm not putting old heads as fall offs. I just don't think it's fair to put like, like a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, and I mean, a lot of people said that I should have put like Eminem on there. But <laughs> to me, Eminem didn't fall off like Hobson fell off. He didn't fall off like Chance fell off. You know, like these are guys that were in their prime still and then kind of disappeared. That's not what Emin Eminem rose up, went through his prime, dominated the charts, and then got older. And I don't, I don't really consider that a a fall off, you know, like I don't consider getting older a fall off, it's just getting older. Like if, if that's the case, man, like Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, like all these guys would be considered fall offs. Like none of these guys would be considered still on top of their game. It's, I, that's why that was that rule. Like, yeah, some of those guys may have fallen off, but it's not the same. It's not they didn't fall off while they were still hot. Like someone said, Two Chains, and I'm like, but Two Chains, Two Chains still makes music, but Two Chains been making music for ten plus years. Like, there's gonna be a decrease. You're gonna hit your peak, and, and then you got to go back down the slope. You know, like nobody stays on top forever. There's been no artist ever that's still. There's no artist that, that was around for ten plus years that's releasing their top albums still. There's really not. There's, there's very few, I should say, very few. There are some, they're very few and far between though. So that was, it, it, as you can tell, it got me a little upset because I'm like, I made that a rule specifically for this reason. I knew it was gonna be something people said and it's just not true. Eminem didn't fall off, Snoop Dogg didn't fall off, Dr. Dre didn't fall off, they didn't fall off, they just got older and they just don't make music or they don't make the same music. Like Eminem's releasing an album this, this summer and it's the first album he's released since like 2020. Lil Wayne, same thing. No one said Lil Wayne fell off, by the way, but I'm saying like, these guys have just been around for a long time. Someone told me I should put Big Sean on there. Big Sean, he's been making music for 10 plus years and, and he just doesn't make it the same way. He's not releasing the same types of music. So some people just needed to know what falling off really is. 
Like, how are you going to put someone like Big Sean and 2 Chains on the same level as someone like Hobson or someone like Logic or someone like B.O.B.? By the way, nobody does. I, I, think, I think there was 100% satisfaction rate with putting B.O.B. at number one, which is just too funny. Like, <laughs> I had people, uh, for the most part, number one and number two were, were good on most people's parts. Um, the only thing with number two is a lot of people thought Chance should have been number two. Same with number one. There were people that said Chance should have been number one. That's just not true. Nobody had a fall, bigger fall off than B.O.B. Nobody had a bigger fall off than B.O.B. Not a single artist had a fall off bigger than B.O.B. It's just true. But anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, that's the list. That's all I really want to talk about with that list. Um, the other list I really wanted to talk about, I know I'm just repeating old content, which is so cheap, but I am walking my dog on a Sunday night trying to get this done so I can release it for everybody tomorrow. Um, part two of the relievers list, I've gotten messages like, when are you doing part two? Like, you promise it's a part two. I just want to start off with, I didn't promise anybody anything. I didn't promise a single person a part two. I said, maybe we should make a part two. Didn't mean I was going to make a part two. I like to try to stay more original. I'm not really a content creator. Like I enjoy doing this podcast. I enjoy you guys listening. I enjoy your feedback, but I wouldn't consider myself a content creator. I don't try to make social media content, nothing like that. So like, I'm, I, I'm just not gonna jump on, oh, I had a big, I had a big reel. I had a big uh, uh, short, whatever. I had one go big. Now I need to replicate it and make 16 parts. I'm sorry, it's just not who I am. So there will be a part two to it, and there's been some some good uh, suggestions. I've I've done a little research into a part two just because, mostly because there were a couple on the list that either had to be reevaluated or I just didn't know. Some of them that I didn't know didn't. I don't think are going to make it on part two either. But some of them, like I had to reevaluate some of them, and, and honestly. My list could have been a little different. I, I support the list I made. I liked it a lot. I think the only one I would have done differently is Grant Balfour. I think I would have put him on at number five. I, I, I saw it. I already knew about it. And I, I saw it when I was doing the list. And I was like, yeah, it's really good. But I'm telling you right now, I don't think I would change anyone out for, for Eric Gagne, though. Love his. Think his is great. I don't think I changed a single person out for Eric Gagne. I'm sorry, people that would put Eric Gagne. I'm sorry, people that said that I need to put him on the list. I don't think I'd trade him out for anybody. I, I like I like the list as is, except for maybe Grant Balfour. I'd probably put Grant Balfour on there. Anyway, so all I had to say about that is a part two is probably coming, but you know what? A part two is not coming right now because that's not. I'm not chasing content. I'm not chasing, you know, if you want to, like the page and see more we really appreciate it if you want to like and subscribe this video and and see more and we really appreciate it but i i, I want to make the content y'all want to see but i don't want to just chase the views and chase the likes on instagram i want people to to come back i want people to subscribe to the podcast that's really what the big thing is with all that so if you guys want to subscribe to the podcast or put on this podcast, if you want to see another one, how about this? If you want to see another one, put it on this podcast right here. Go down to the comments, whether you're listening on Spotify, maybe you're listening on YouTube uh, or YouTube music, whatever. Go down there and say, I want to hear a part two in the baseball relievers. And you know what? Then I'll do it. Then I'll do it right on the spot. But until then, I'm not going to do anything. So that's, that's all I got to say about that one there. So it's been a busy week, very busy week um, for Schnabel Studios um, outside of the full-time gig, which has been busy on its own. Uh, we've had a couple things going on. So the first thing going on is that Mary and I are on the move again. Now for frequent listeners, you're probably like, what in the hell are you guys doing? Well, don't worry. This one's just up the street. We were at our, we're at our place we were at very, uh, very temporarily. And we finally have our place ready to be moved in. Moving in Memorial Day weekend, which uh, is this weekend for people listening. So there might be another audio-only podcast coming out. We'll see how it goes. Um, but we're, we're excited to be moving in. 
and we're just doing a lot of packing. We're doing a lot of setting things up to be moved. Um, and that's kind of why it's been a little busy. But on top of work and moving, I actually had a freelancing shoot from Thursday to, I was supposed to go uh, today, which is Sunday. I was supposed to also go Sunday, but I ended up going Sunday. I had a little, a little bit of break today because I had to do some editing for this Dallas card show I was at. But I did Thursday through uh, Saturday, and it's just, it was a long, some long days of shooting, some long days of editing, and it's just been tough to sit behind a microphone. So when I was going to walk Brady, because Brady's been feeling a little sick, and I wanted to give him a little extra attention, uh, when I was going to film Brady, I was like, you know what, let me pop on a microphone and start talking, and we'll get a podcast done that way. So we did the Dallas Card Show. Um, it's one of the biggest, if not maybe the biggest card show in the entire nation. Um, it was at a Marriott and it took up two ballrooms and six side rooms and two and a half hallways just to have all of the vendors out there. It was huge. I've now been to two card shows. As you guys know, I went to collect the with Jason Page, which is basically a card show as well. And it really, really was crazy how, how big this this uh how big this card show was now i'm not a big cards person there was some really cool stuff i got some really good video of some stuff uh some of the coolest items i think i saw personally um <clears throat> and one of them's highlighted it'll, it'll be on schnabel studios eventually um it'll be on schnabel studios eventually sorry there was something moving around i need to get brady away from it uh there was this guy that had a Jamal Murray card that was printed on a basketball court piece. And I just thought it was so cool. Like, I thought it was such a cool thing to have. Like, apparently it was, uh, what did he say, Upper Deck or something like that when they lost the rights. They decided to print cards on different objects to make them more valuable. And one of them that they printed was on the old Bobcats court. Now, why it was Jamal Murray on the old Bobcats court, I don't know. Like, he could have made it an old Bobcat <laughs> or like LaMetal Ball, who's on the current team that's not the Bobcats. Obviously, they changed their name to the Charlotte Hornets, but I don't know why it was Jamal Murray. I don't, I don't even think he started there. I think he's been on the Nuggets his whole career. So I, I don't know why it was that. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. I thought that was a cool item. There was also a Mickey Mantle signed game used bat, which was just cool to look at. I got some video of that as well. Uh, it was just really cool to look at because one, it was Mickey Mantle's bat, which is like in itself pretty cool, right? Like, but then on top of that, it was signed by Mickey Mantle. Any kind of old. Um, memorabilia like that I really enjoy because there's just something about it when you look at even if it's not signed or not anything like that it's just the fact that it's old memorabilia always gets me because you just kind of look at it and you you think of the history behind it or like if you look at someone's bat you think about how they hit you know they used it that 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 that's from whatever era that person's from or whatever year that person's from, like you, you hear all the stories and the legends about all this stuff. And then you actually see a piece of what they did. It just that the history of that just really, really gets me going. So seeing a Mickey Mantle use that and being signed on top of it, I mean, anything signed by those guys is gonna be valuable because they're no longer with us. So it was, it was really cool. Went for $200,000, I would have to say it was the most expensive piece in the entire auction house. Um, or in the entire in the entire uh, show, I don't think I saw anything over two hundred thousand dollars in the entire show. Um, but it was really cool. It was really great to 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 see something like that and see history. That guy had a lot of historical things on there. He had a lot of he had like a glove used by some nineteen twenties player. I don't even know who the player was, but it's already going to be valuable because it's from the nineteen twenties, and it was really cool. So, so that was probably the coolest thing I saw there coolest two things I saw there I should say but the coolest thing I did there which is obviously a different statement is on Saturday I got to film 
former AL MVP Josh Hamilton and seven-time All-Star Michael Young, which you may have seen if you follow Schnabel Studios already. I posted about it on Sunday. Um, I got some pictures with them and I posted a little bit of behind the scenes stuff and you'll see more stuff coming out in the next couple weeks from that card show. Um, but we, we got to, I got to, I got to go and film those guys and I got to, you know, it was just a cool experience. It really was a cool experience. So I got this gig by emailing them just saying, Hey, I'm a freelance videographer. I'd love to, you know, work with you guys. And they told me to come out and do it. And then on Saturday, all I did was I, I, the first two hours, I think it was sorry, one to three, I just stayed with Josh, or 12 to three, I should say. I stayed with Josh, and from three to five, I stayed with Michael and record, basically record them documentary style where I just got some different shots, got some different angles, and just literally recorded them signing things. They signed probably... 500 mail-in pieces a piece and they met fans and they took pictures and they you know signed things and people paid for it and it was a cool little event uh brought me back i, I michael young back in the mid 2000s was probably one of my favorite non-yankee players i just really liked michael young um good ball player good average you know just a good, good overall player. And then obviously Josh Hamilton, one of the most electric players of his time. He's a, uh, for people that don't know Josh Hamilton, which you might not, his, his playing career wasn't all that long. He's best known for being an electric player that had a tough drug problem and um, had a couple times where he relapsed in his life and kind of ended his career when he signed with the Angels and they relapsed and I don't believe he ever made it back to the bigs after that. But it's it was just cool being able to to be around them and 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 to just see these people that you grew up watching. So I didn't I don't have really any cool stories because I didn't really get to talk to them. They were just very busy. They were signing the entire time. When they weren't signed, they were seeing fans and when they weren't seeing fans they left. So I didn't really get to talk to them too much. Uh, the coolest story is I got to talk to Josh for maybe five-ish minutes at one point, maybe probably less than that. It's probably one minute or two minutes. And I was telling him that uh, Mary's going to take the bar in Texas and he wished her luck. So she got, she got a good luck from Josh Hamilton, which she really doesn't understand how cool that is. But anybody that knows who Josh Hamilton is understands how cool that is. Um, but... That's probably the coolest story that came out of it. There, there wasn't really much interacting going on. You know, I think I talked to Michael Young for a total of 30 seconds, and it was very quick. It was just like, how are you? Good to meet you, you know. I try not to, and this is a tip for anybody that's working with people that you may have watched, and I've, I've had this happen now a lot, where I've worked with people from my youth. Don't first thing you do bring up, like, how much you used to love their work. These people are usually still making some sort of content, you know, whether they're on the internet now doing content creation or they're still making music or TV or movies or whatever it may be, you know. Some of them know why they're there. They know, like baseball players know, like, yeah, you liked me when I was playing, but no one ever wants to be reminded of how old they are or how long ago they retired or, you know, a 30 year old going up and saying, I was the biggest fan of you when I was a kid. Well, how old are you now? Well, now I'm 30. It just, it, it, they don't like it. You know, people don't like it. Some of them like don't mind it. And I think when they go to those conventions, it's a different story, right? Like you're at a convention promoting yourself as a character or as something like that. You kind of know what you're getting into with that. But just a word of advice, if you are working, I'm not saying anything if you meet somebody. If you just meet somebody on the street, whatever. But if you're working with somebody, don't bring up how much you used to love their work. It's just not, not the right move. 
you know, and I've worked with a couple of people like that. Like, I remember the first time I really learned that, and I didn't, I never said how much I used to love his work. I just said, I, you know, I'm a big, you know, I'm a fan, and you know, I'd bring up when we were when we would chat, I'd bring up stories. But I think the first time that really ever happened with me was Aaron Carter. I, I when he came in and we did the interview with him and stuff like that, and we were chatting, and I drove him places. <laughs> it was. It was, it was, it was, we had a lot of time to chat in this one, let's just say. And I would talk to him about like, yeah, I'm a fan and I liked, you know, your music and stuff like that. And then, oh God, I just got attacked by a bug. This is going to be a weird podcast. Anyway, um, but when we would talk, you know, he would ask like, do you, did you, do you actually listen to my music or have you listened to my music and stuff like that? And that's when you bring up like, because for Aaron Carter, I, I told him how, I mean, we were like the same age, but he was just famous a long time ago when this happened, right? I think Aaron Carter was five years older than I was. I think, I think it was about five years. I think he died at 34, so maybe six years older than I was. And so I would tell him like, yeah, like I went to a couple of your shows. I've been to two Aaron Carter shows when I was a kid. And I told him, you know, where it was and who he opened with and he'd remember the show. But it's, it's, it was weird talking about him because he was like the same age I was when he was doing those shows. He was just a kid. Anyway, that's really when I learned don't do that because what I ha- one of my co-hosts said, like, yeah, like, I used to love you or something like that. And I, like, took him to the side and I was like, listen, like, this guy still has an active career like he doesn't want to hear the interviewer say like you used to be my favorite but now you're old <laughs> like no one wants to hear that so that's my that's my word of advice to anybody that's working with people like that anyway so when I met these guys I didn't want to be like yeah Michael used to be one of my favorite players to use in MVP baseball oh <laughs> five like <laughs> I didn't want to be that guy so I wouldn't be that guy and I, I just kind of had a casual conversation with him. Like I said, uh, Josh Hamilton, I think I talked to for maybe two minutes max. I told him about Schnabel Studios because I was wearing a Schnabel Studios shirt, which if you go to Schnabel Studios uh, on Instagram or, tic- or Instagram, any of them, any of them, it's, uh, it's posted all over the place. You go, you'll see the shirt I was wearing and he asked, what is it? I told him it's my production company. I'm a freelancer out here working. And I talked to him a little bit about that. And he, that's how we got into the whole kind of thing. He said, how long have you been out here? Blah, 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 blah. But anyway, so it was a cool opportunity. I got to have a lot of fun doing it. And there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming out of it because we got a lot of cool signature stuff. We got a lot of cool, uh, a lot of cool video stuff. And they were cool people to be around. So that's why it's been such a busy time. And I'm going to do a play-by-play right now as Brady sneaks up on this pack of rabbits. He is lurking very low to the ground now he stopped he there's four of them he doesn't know which one to go after as they all hop away and now he he's he's slowly moving the rabbit's looking at him eye to eye his left paw hangs near now it's touching the ground slowly the rabbits don't seem to be afraid they're not moving but brady's not really going for it he's just looking and moving very slow He's moving very slow. Now he's speeding up a little bit. There he goes, he's going after him and they got away because they're rabbits and they're much more agile and fast than he is. And now we're back to our walk. So hopefully there's not gonna be many more of these audio only podcasts. It's just been really busy, a uh, busy time and, and uh, we've, we, we just need time to, to do this stuff. But I think once we, we move to this new place, and my travel schedule is a lot, a lot, a lot lighter. Um, and I, I mean, there'll be other freelancing shoots, but hopefully they won't be taking up as much time where I could still get out there and record one night or something like that. And, and guest wise, for people that are upset about the guests, well, first of all, I've noticed that these solo podcasts are doing a lot better than the guests, which is crazy to me because I thought the guests would really be the ones that, excuse me, bring in the, bring in the people. But it hasn't been. It's been, it's been these, it's been these solo casts where I kind of just talk about what's going on and stuff like that. So they're going to be a little more structured coming up. I do, uh, 
I do want to do uh, a couple ideas I have in mind. Like one of them is kind of talking about not freelancing per se, but having a no budget film, like doing no budget films and stuff like that. Um, just things I've done in my career that I want to talk about and kind of give people advice on and stuff like that, which I've done before. We had an offstage podcast where I did stuff like that, but I have a much more structured. There'll be more baseball episodes coming up as well. I haven't done one in a couple weeks. I think I'm, I'm in the process of I'm in the process of thinking about making that a a a weekly of its own because I've really enjoyed doing it. People seem to enjoy it so far in the solo podcast. The baseball ones always get the the highest love. You know, we'll we'll do a little bit of baseball at the end of this right now. Um I have not been one of the reasons I haven't done a new baseball podcast is I've not been doing much baseball watching. I've been following, still watch the Yankees basically every game they're on. There's a couple games I've missed here and there. What I do know is Aaron Judge is on a tear. Yankees are on a tear as a whole, although their competition hasn't been uh, top notch, you would say. They just played the White Sox this weekend. And I believe the Dodgers are still really good. This is this is the one baseball take I'll I'll, I'll take out of this, um, and and then we'll and then we'll wrap it up. All right. What I've noticed is, first of all, the league has been pushing Otani so much, and you knew they would when he went to the Dodgers. There's two things about this. I don't know. They're definitely doing it because he's on the Dodgers. But I also wonder if they're doing it because they know he did wrong. And they're just trying to push how good he is. Either one, to try to get people to not pay attention to the things he did wrong. Or two, to uh, <laughs> to, to just kind of cover up. like They're trying to make it so, like, look how good he is before a court decision comes out that is actually Otani that placed all the bets. And... <laughs> Like, it's going to be funny at the end of the year when we're thinking about, like, you know, Tani won another MVP. Remember when he was supposed to be suspended because he gambled on baseball and they just acted like he didn't? Like, the crazy thing is when they, they talked about the report, they found out they got gambled on every sport you could possibly gamble on except for baseball. Like, get out of town with that. There's absolutely no way. I don't care if it was Otani or if it was this guy. There's no way the guy didn't put one bet on baseball ever. He, they said they bet on every single sport through an illegal bookie. So he's going to go through an illegal bookie, but he's not going to bet on baseball? Like, yeah, I, listen, I'm a rule bender, but I don't bend the rules that much. Like, it doesn't matter if you bet on baseball or not. Going through an illegal bookie is already against the rules in baseball. Like, you can bet on other sports as long as they're through legal gambling apps or ga- legal gambling ways. That's not a, a, going through an illegal bookie is not a legal gambling way. So it doesn't matter if you bet on baseball or not, you're still doing something that's not legal. So, I, I don't know. It, and, and the other thing is, man, if it's tr- I still am on the fence whether I believe Otani is, is completely innocent or if his interpreter is just taking the fall. If his interpreter's taking the fall, man, they must have something really good lined up for his family because he's facing 30 years. I don't care who you are in life, all right? I promise you I would not take that kind of fall for 30 years in prison. I don't care what you're giving my family because they're not giving it to him. He's going to be in prison for 30 years. They're not giving it to this guy. So someone... In his, in his life is getting something from Otani if he's covering it up. That's why it's tough to say he's covering it up because the guy could be spending the rest of his life in jail over this. So cover, committing burglary and fraud and all this other stuff. But the big story that came out of it is David Fletcher, who was the second baseman for the Angels for a long time. I guess he's in the minor leagues now. He also placed bets with this guy. Or something like that. And it's, it's becoming a whole... I, I, I don't know how this story gets swept under the rug. I guess it's because so much is going on in sports right now. <clears throat> you got hockey. You got uh, basketball. Conference finals are now set. 
I actually don't know if the Western Conference Finals is set right now, but I know the other ones are set. And there's just so, and, you know, and NFL news is kind of is kind of heating up. But we're talking about an active baseball player placed bets with an illegal bookie through his interpreter. Like he admitted he did it through the interpreter. So we're not we're just gonna sit here and act like so other players on this team are doing it, but Otani didn't do it. It, it just doesn't make any sense. But to me, when this came out, it was I didn't sit here like, dude, Otani would do such a thing? That's crazy. My first thought was like, oh, this makes sense why he would defer the money then. Because he's making millions of dollars betting. He doesn't care. He's betting millions of dollars. He's probably like, don't give it to me yet. Because if you give it to me, I'm going to bet it all away anyway. So, I don't know what to think of it. I don't want to place blame on anybody. Because I don't know the stories, right? I don't know the full context of anything. I'm just somebody that gets to hear the story and make an opinion off of it myself. But... You know, the quack's like a duck, right? But no matter what, this is the one conclusion we can definitely make from this. No matter who did what, we're never going to know the truth. Never going to know. You have a guy that they are saying is going to have a better career than Babe Ruth, right? Like, they're saying he's the best player in... In, in history of the sport, and right in the middle of his prime, he's going to get yanked away, and you think they're going to do anything about it? You're out of your mind. You'd have to have the most unbiased... There's no, there's no agency out there that would ever be able to take care of this. There's none. So, I'm just... That, now I'm hitting my conspiracy, and I'm hitting conspiracy stuff, but... No matter what, we're never going to know the truth. We're never going to know if it was really the interpreter. We're never going to know if it was Otani. We're never going to know who else was involved. We're just going to have to accept the reality they give us because that's just what the reality is going to end up being. And in history, we're never going to know if it should be different or not. And that's my rant on that. That's my baseball take of the day. So take it or leave it. But... Anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around. Um, Sorry to give you such an unorthodox podcast episode, but I really wanted to get an episode out there. I really wanted to make sure that I brought something to the table every week. Sometimes the episodes just aren't as strong because I I just need to get something out there so you guys have something. I try to make them, just because I don't think they're as strong doesn't mean I don't think they're entertaining. You know, updates are fine. I thought that last piece there was great. Um, beginning, I try to talk, you know, I try to get something entertaining in there, but I, I sometimes have to take them where I can get them. And I just want to stay consistent with y'all. I don't want y'all to think I'm, I'm packing up and leaving. Um, and I, but I also don't want to do throwback episodes every two weeks because I'm just too busy. So I want, I want live looks on what's going on. So I appreciate everybody that stuck around. If you're new and you made it this far, why don't you like and subscribe? If you like the video, subscribe to the podcast. It'll do you no harm. And it'll just give us a lot of help. Um, yeah, I mean, we're trying to build that channel. We're really close to 300 subscribers on, on YouTube right now. The YouTube shorts have been really popping off. We thank everybody that's paid attention and, and viewed them and liked them and commented and interacted with us. We love interacting with you, man. If, you've, if you go to our social media, you know, at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or at Chernobyl Studios on anything else, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, TikTok, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn. Leave us a comment. We love interacting with you. Leave us a message. We love interacting with you. However you want to interact with us, we love interacting with you. So we appreciate you guys being there for us and with us and all that stuff. And we appreciate you listening. That is my, my listener appreciation time right there. I try to do that at the end of every episode. Uh, so you guys know how much we appreciate y'all being a part of our be a part of our lives and stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Mad Props Pod or Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, and subscribe on YouTube as well. Um, if you missed any episodes, you can always go back and listen or watch. We have all the episodes on YouTube, Spotify, 
um, Facebook, sorry, not Facebook, uh, Apple, uh, Good Pods, wherever you want to listen, we're there. You can listen to old episodes, new episodes. We try to get reels out every week, so definitely go follow us on social medias. Leave us a comment, leave us an email, however you want to do that, interact with us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much again for listening. We will see you next week. This has been Mad Props. Later. Say bye, Brady. Bye, Brady. Bye, Brady.